In any game where you're interacting with other humans, be it friends or strangers, online or in person, as a DM or as a player, you're exposed to the possibility to engage with some less than savoury individuals to say the least. While D&D is a place where lifelong friendships are made, it can also be a place where you meet and interact with the bottom of the barrel of humanity. Today, we're going to look at some of the unfortunate interactions that have taken place at various D&D tables. During the great isolation of 2020, I joined a small Discord group I found through Roll20. We've gone on numerous adventures together since and still play together to this day because most of the members are chill. Notice that I say most. There have been several horror stories from this group, but I'll start with the worst. The first player I had to kick from my tables. First of all, kudos for taking the initiative to kick the problem player from your table. It's never a nice nor an easy thing to do, but sometimes it's necessary for the health of a group as a whole, as well as the other people in it. The needs of the many rather than the few. In 2021, I started running my own homebrew game. Over the next year, I find myself increasingly burnt out by the end of a three hour game. It takes me a while to realize why, and it's because of this one player. I'll call him Moby. Burnout is a big problem that happens to most DMs at some point. There's obviously a lot of nuance here, but since earlier you said that you still play together now, I think you're probably right that it was Moby's fault that you were feeling that way, the common denominator after all. And unfortunately, it really is true that one player can just suck the life out of the rest of the table, like Strahd waking up at 2am with bad breath and a hangover. In my group, there is a range of players and ages and backgrounds. We had three players from North America, who at the time were 20 to 27 years old, three from the UK, myself, non-binary, a 21-year-old player, and Moby, 40 male. I bring the ages up because he was constantly using it as an excuse for some of his behavior, as well as his autism. Bearing in mind two other players, and possibly myself too, are also autistic, so I don't count that as an excuse. A common thing with problem players is that they'll find some sort of excuse as to why they're behaving that way. And some behaviors could probably be excused by such reasons, such as, sorry, I was a bit moozy this session, my dog died last week. But week in, week out, I'm an unpleasant person to be around because I'm somewhat older than you. Most definitely is not one of those reasons. Moby would constantly talk over players. Player X describing how their finishing blow kills the last enemy. Moby has to speak over them when they're mid-sentence to insert some non-joke or to try and share something random. I'm mid-BBEG monologue, a noble is bestowing a gift upon an NPC, or other PCs are talking to the NPCs to gather intel. Moby has to stay out loud in that moment how his character is going to do something idle. Not even anything relevant, just my character jumps into the fountain to chill off. He seems to have no concept of waiting. I began to communicate this with him, saying things like, we will get to you once we've finished X thing, but he would go, okay, then do it anyway. This gives a vibe of huge main character syndrome. Someone who sees themselves as the center of their universe is never going to be fun to play with. Part of Dungeons and Dragons is sharing the spotlight with your fellow players and making sure that everyone gets the spotlight at some point. They should be able to enjoy the experience without constantly inserting yourself into the joke because Baby Wawa can't stand someone else having attention. Then, he would also fall asleep in games. We knew this because he is a loud snorer. The games ran at 2 to 5 p.m. his time. It was incredibly disrespectful and it happened about half a dozen times. I mean, this is just rude in practically every social setting, not just D&D. One part that really angered me in particular is when the party met queer NPCs. He, as a player, always had to voice how weirded out he was by that. Unless he met a lesbian, then he was suddenly pretty interested. The overwhelming majority of the other players were queer, and those who weren't were very good allies. At one point, they met a non-binary NPC, and Moby had to throw out all of the most ignorant phases, like, but what are they really? And calling them he, uh, she, I mean, uh, it. As a non-binary person myself in particular, it was aggravating. He would try and just talk randomly about his IRL political views in the middle of the game, like how he believed in self-determination and would respect pronouns, but he believed that sex is equal to gender. And I had to tell him to stop too often. In retrospect, I should have kicked him out of the game before this ever came to be, but 
I am someone who, at the time, did not really have the emotional tools to stick up for myself and be direct with other people. My instinct was just to take it. Okay, now this is the smoking gun for me. The other stuff is something that can be mediated and navigated like grown-ups. But unfortunately, now we've crossed into, uh-oh, bigger alert territory. If people are unable to be inappropriate and inclusive in their game, then there's a much higher chance of them being bigots to other people at the table as well, or in their everyday life. This for me would be the tipping point, where the DM and other players need to have a serious conversation about removing Moby from the game. If one toddler hoards all the little Legos and shouts over his Whittle Toddler classmates and calls the other Whittle Toddlers offensive names and, and is a Whittle Toddler bigger, then that Whittle Toddler is out of the group. Full stop. End of story. But then there was his need to feel superior jokes. He began making snide jokes to other players about how their characters weren't optimised for combat or how the player didn't know the rules properly. I don't run combat heavy games, I struggled to run good combat as a DM so I didn't realise how bad it had gotten until a player messaged me that they wanted to leave because of his behaviour. My own brain didn't care if I was personally being hurt by someone, but if someone hurt my friends and they were in danger. I told him that all of his straws were used up and he was no longer welcome in the game. Putting other people down is classic narcissistic behaviour. Or alternatively, someone with chronic self-image problems. Either way, it's problematic to make jokes as put-downs to others, to put yourself on a pedestal, and to criticise someone for making a non-optimal character is laughable, really. It's ultimately the job of experienced players to hold people up and encourage all playstyles. I respect that the fact another player spoke up made you kick Moby, but your mental health and emotional state is important as the DM too. Your feelings matter, you're not just a robot or an NPC without real life feelings, and if a player is solely being unkind to the DM, that's still grounds for getting the boot. He proceeded to bombard me with days of emotional messages about how he felt completely blindsided and completely worthless now. How he began to what I'd said and done, and how he didn't know that they didn't appreciate his joking personality. I have never had such a fun experience DMing as I have had after he left. We played that campaign for another one and a half years and had a blast, and I added even more queer characters since I felt more free to do so. This story ultimately doesn't go into much detail as to whether anything was raised privately with Moby, and that I think is always the first part of corn in most cases. Either way, this seems to be a pretty cut and dry case of incompatible personalities at the table. I'm glad that D&D has become more inclusive and enjoyable for you since their departure. If you're enjoying the video, please leave a like and subscribe for more D&D content. Comment your own D&D horror story below, and let me know if you'd like me to possibly discuss it in my next D&D horror story video. Next horror story. I'm a voice actor and I've worked in the industry for the better part of the last 15 years. I don't work in English, so just a heads up, I might not be someone that you recognise. That being said, one of my hobbies has always been TTRPG games, and I believe they've influenced my decision to pursue this career. I'm pretty sure I can already see where this is going at this point. I do wonder though whether this person is cast for their particular voice, or whether they tend to do voices that differ from their own. I've been a DM for as long as I can remember, and it's truly the way that I enjoy the games. Just because I'm a voice actor doesn't mean my games are any better produced. Or that I perform thousands of voices for immersion's sake. To be honest, I actually tend not to do voices for my NPCs. After doing that all day for work, I don't feel like continuing it in my free time. First of all, yep, yeah, DMing is the best way to play D&D, but the expectation of high production quality that exists anyway must be doubly so for a voice acting DM. Critical Role is one of the things that got me into D&D in the first place, and it's no doubt that people like Brennan Lee Mulligan and Matt Mercer set a bit of an unrealistically high expectation for players who are just joining the hobby. I do personally look up to them as paragons of the hobby, but would never expect my own or other DMs to match their production quality. I am sorry, my mentor. I have failed you. <laughs> I mean, they literally have whole teams behind them and years of experience in the industry. The voices and productionness of D&D are the very qualities I enjoy and personally look forward to. But then again, I don't do it for my day job, so I can imagine it would be very tiresome to do it for 10 hours straight and then go straight onto it in the afternoon. Up until now, it hasn't been a problem. However, my usual group has become unable to play regularly due to scheduling conflicts. 
Since TTRPGs, particularly D&D, have been my hobby for such a long time, I didn't want to stop playing altogether. So I asked a friend who runs a game store if he knew anyone looking to join a game, and he did. He set me up with four players, three experienced ones and one who had only played a few one-shots. I think this is a teeny tiny mistake. D&D is a social game, ultimately meaning that starting up a group is a time where frictions can arise from unforeseen places, even if you already know the people you're playing with. The problem with starting D&D with a whole new group of strangers, especially in person, is you haven't already done that social vetting that leads to someone being your friend in the first place. My frickin' red flag senses are already tingling. Our games were going to take place in my friend's store, so I met them briefly beforehand and held a session zero to discuss how my games are run and to help them with coming up with their characters. They all seemed eager and honestly, that really pumped me up. First off, good job on the session zero, love to see it. That was until our actual first session came. We met up and started the session right away. The problem was, all that initial excitement seemed to vanish as soon as I began to speak. I didn't think much of it at first, but it got progressively worse. I could see the frustration on the faces of the experienced players and the one who had just started playing. Eventually, he pulled out his phone and began scrolling through his feed. And boom, there goes the dynamo. That's really sad. The expectations that the players put on the DM to give them an all-singing, all-dancing performance just isn't fair. It's okay to want to have fun, but I think a symptom of D&D entering the mainstream, the average Joe and or mama now thinks that every DM is as good as the frankly unreachable Matt Mercer, Brennan Lee Mulligan and Abria Iyengar. This is why a group needs to be at least somewhat made of familiar faces and or mutuals, as well as some decently close friends in my opinion. There are far too many weirdos out there to trust that gathering six of them isn't going to bring in at least one complete imbecile in with the nets. So that's it? What, are we some kind of suicide squad? At one point it got a bit too overwhelming and I called for a 10 minute bathroom break. When I returned to the table, I overheard them complaining to my friend, the store owner. They were saying, and I quote, you said he was a voice actor. They then proceeded to curse me and complain that I wasn't giving them the experience they wanted to. My friend, who seemed cornered even though I could hear him trying to defend me. This is hell. Nothing more or less. But see my previous point about gathering weirdos. To me, this actually sounds like the game shop owner friend massively oversold the session as a critical role or Dimension 20 sort of experience and set the expectations and stage sky high for the poster. A really unfair situation to, whether intentionally or not, cultivate. They stopped when I came into their field of vision, but it was clear I had heard everything. They all just packed up their things and got up and left without even saying goodbye or goodnight. This was frustrating to say the least. It seems they were expecting a high level of D&D with a plethora of voices, sounds and other immersive elements. While it's fine for them to have their own expectations, it did bother me. This is hopefully a good lesson for more than just the subject of this post. When we make D&D groups, we're putting our mental and emotional health on the line. Social structures can be super messy. If you're planning on starting a group, you need at least one or two people you're very, very comfortable with and who know what to expect of your session. The others can be people who are relatively close mutual friends of them to make up the rest of your group. Social vetting is important for this sort of game. Bringing in weirdos never, ever just works itself out. If you're going to play with complete strangers, I'd recommend playing online. That way, if things get messy, at least you can just do the old Irish exit with ease and bury your online presence. Consider that my hot take. Speaking of which, if you enjoyed this dive into the D&D Reddit space, you'll probably really enjoy this video here, where I look at and discuss some of the hottest D&D takes on Reddit. Remember to comment your D&D horror story below, like and subscribe for more content, and I'll see you next time.